What's up, everybody? I'm Combat. Call me Red. My boy Zing. What's going on? It's my man Cub right there. You know, we want to welcome you to the Combat Cub podcast, where we're going to reflect on fashion topics. Okay. Combat tech. Yes, sir. Funny videos. Hmm. News around the world. <laughs> Whatever anybody want to reflect on. Sounds good. But enough of me. Let's get to this cast. And we roll on. Part of the eclipse, man. It is. Yeah, it, is. Yeah. it just happens. This <laughs> was <laughs> like big right here, boy. <laughs> oh man. Oh, this is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it smells it's... good, though. Was it watermelon? Watermelon ice. Man, best ice in the world. <laughs> what? Watermelon ice. <laughs> oh man. Welcome back everybody to uh, another episode of Combat Cub. Of course, it's your man's Combat coming from the green couch on another beautiful weekend. Got my boy Cub to the right. <sighs> you know, we just <laughs> sitting here kicking it. But, you know, we're going to start it off by saying, how was your week? Man, it's good. Got a job done. Just one? Yeah. As much as y'all ass work, I thought you might have six done this week. No. I mean, there were six jobs, or seven in one, but, you know, I had electrical, plumbing, I had uh, tile, of course, waterproofing. That's a lot. Yeah, some yeah. vinyl flooring. I had beans, and beef, crown molding. chicken, tortillas. Oh, man. You no. Know, headaches, <laughs> rude customers. Oh, Taco crazy Bell. employees. Nah. But they, you love your employees. My employees are cool. The job sucks, but my employee, my people keep me there. I hear you. You know, you have to there. carry them though. I bet. Nah. Yeah, in times because we the fastest, but I ain't carrying the ass nowhere unless they <laughs> wound it. <laughs> Where are you shot? Get a tourniquet. We're getting her out of here. Oh man. <laughs> How about yours? I mean, that's that, that was your week. Your yeah. Th- th- this week was cool, man. Oh okay. It was cool. I mean, mm. it sucks, you know. Because, you know, this week we had a lot of bad news, you feel me, from uh, Troy yeah. finding out mm-hmm. you know, about him. And then uh, little Marcus finding out about him. Yeah. Little 16-year-old that died in a car wreck or a car crash. Oh, I didn't hear about yeah, that. it was a high-speed chase the other morning, last weekend. Here uh-huh. in Lawrenceburg? Uh-huh. Out, I think out Loretta somewhere. Oh, my goodness. And he then, was he then, was running from the cops. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, uh, Sweet Pea's mom died, which, you know, auntie, man, she passed away. So, uh, the thing is, her funeral and Marcus' funeral is both on Monday mm. at the same place, Loretta Memorial. Man. Yeah. But, you know, just like Becca said, the devil trying to get people down, but we just got to kick his ass in, <laughs> in the face. You feel me? Just one good swift kick to the face. Yeah. Man, it's hard to hear all that, man. Yeah, it's been a lot of bad news. Yeah. <sighs> But we'll get over it. Yep. We're still going to come out on top with a smile on our face. You feel me? Yes, sir. And shout out to Legends Express for having some of the best lemonade in the county. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Lemonada. Mm-hmm. It's so nice. good. Homemade, yeah. too. A little taste of heaven right there, buddy. <laughs> oh, man. I had, I had some, uh, some pork barbecue nachos. <laughs> You right? I was. <laughs> While I was eating. <laughs> oh, my God. I will be. I love some nachos, though, man. I like uh, I like how they have, like, the black beans in there, and they got... The black uh, beans and pico said anything off. Yeah. Man, they know what they're doing over there. They do. They do. I'm not, I mean, I like nachos, but I wouldn't eat them all the time, you know? Yeah. 
Like when we had Rick's barbecue and Etheridge, boy, I said, fuck they nachos up. They boy, they they give you portion. And then I ask for extra everything else. Yeah. Oh, oh. Just put it all on top, bro. You like Rick's? You do? Okay. I don't eat the one here in town though. Oh yeah. I couldn't tell you the last time I ate Rick's barbecue. Okay. I think it was the last time it was in Etheridge. Mm. Oh, they don't have one out there no mm -hmm. more, do they? Turn into the shell station. Uh Okay. No. But this episode of this podcast, you know, we're going to talk about, once again, the whole solar eclipse. We're going to actually see the videos and the pictures of it and, you know, give y'all insight of what we think about it, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. The aftermath. Yeah. Yeah, the aftermath. So we're going to play a couple of just randoms. Randoms? Yeah. I like playing... Uh Cod with random sometimes. No, some no, nah, fuck that. Them randoms, dude. They be pissing me off. Especially when we go into the DMZ, bruh, and they just want to just take off on you. Yeah. But we had that one dude that took off on us in uh zombies. But he came back and brought us hella shit. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he brought us hella shit. I don't know how he done it. And then we got that. a whole with it. Then we had some Mexicans on the roof fucking giving us hella money, bruh. <sighs> we gotta go back into zombies. Yeah. That'd be good. Whenever I can get you on. Yeah, I know it, man. I'm always working. Doing something. Gotta make that money. Gotta make that bull, bull, bull. Gotta make that bull, bull, bull. <laughs> uh, you wanna just hit any of these? You just hit any random, as long as it's about the after of the eclipse or whatever. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, God. Look at this one. You wanna check this one out? Let's do it. She looked like an alien anyway. Oh, man. She came out the eclipse. She saw um, this gal on Fox and Friends just the other day. Uh, she's a specialist on how the eclipse could actually impact you based on your sign. What's your yeah. sign, Brooks? I'm a Leo. What's your sign? I'm an oh Aries. God. Ooh, God of War. And I'm the lion. <laughs> <laughs> Astrologer Susan Miller joins us now. Susan, how are you feeling yeah. about this eclipse right now? Is this good, bad, or ugly? So ugly? excited. You look like you got a blood you know, pressure. It's up. bringing us all together with common <laughs> She's red as fuck. It's a good thing. It's, it's a really good thing. Oh, she allergic so, to okay, the flowers. So I want to know when your birthday is, <laughs> my, my friend Aries. What day? So my birthday was on Saturday, April uh, 6th. You are definitely okay, I'm, I'm already over this. The, the path of the eclipse. <laughs> yeah, I'm already over on April <laughs> Where the hell my face from? Minus four or five uh -oh. days. You're so, so going I'm to walk feel out it. the door. And Might have been that big. And you'll get a fake. whole renewed <laughs> sense <laughs> of self. <laughs> oh, right there. You may wear different clothes. In a few okay, yeah. Are you, 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 it's, yeah, I'm done with okay. this. Oh, and understand nope. your yep. talents in Nobody want to hear about the Zodiac. Don't care. All right, let's see. That one was boo. Yeah. On to the next one. Maybe this could be a thumbs up. All right, what do you think about that? I mean, ladies are into that, you know, the Zodiac signs and trying to... Um, I used to read my horoscope. I mean... I used to, too. I mean, it, 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 makes, it makes sense, though. Like, on what's going on in my life. With, I mean, I don't know. It's weird. It's yeah. weird how that all happens. Hmm. How can how can somebody write something down about... I don't know. It's crazy. I don't know. I had a friend. She was talking to her yesterday. And she was telling me that uh, six months ago, she had... Uh, um, she was like, in six months, I want to be happy. And then six months, she wrote it down on the calendar. And... Uh, I think it was May, came out to be May uh, 18th or 8th or something like that. And, uh, you know, there was something, she, she was trying to get a house, she and her husband, and uh, no, the close date was on the 8th. Oh, shit. Yeah. So I was just like, man, that's so cool, you know, seeing all this. That's like, weird, bro. Yeah. That's I weird. love it. I love it. I was like, I like seeing that happen, but I don't know about, you know. That's kind of like a manifest destiny, but uh, man, any one of these, let me know. Should just pick a random. P a random. That one looks interesting. Yeah, we on some random shit today. Maybe this is a thumbs up. In ancient times, oh, look at that. I was serious. Was seen as a perfect clock. Yeah, that's it. Stars and planets moved yeah. along fixed trajectories, repeating the same movements yearly. Any change in this apparent harmony, it was believed, must also have effects on Earth. Hmm. 
The sudden appearance of a comet or lunar and solar eclipses was particularly suspicious. It was regularly suspected that approaching comets caused earthquakes, especially large ones. Interesting. Even today, many believe that the position of the sun, moon, and even the other planets in our solar system can cause earthquakes on Earth. However, part of this belief is absolutely to be excluded. The gravitational attraction of the other planets, even the largest, is indeed too weak to cause an earthquake, as demonstrated by the famous event in March of 1982, when all the planets aligned, or almost, relative to Earth without causing any effects. Not even if all the planets were aligned together could they influence the balance of our faults, not even the most sensitive ones. In short, the planets are too far away to cause. Damn! Trouble. So the planets actually lined up in the eighties. truth in the That's crazy. That the I didn't even know that, bro. Seismic activity. By studying the frequency of large earthquakes in Chile, Makes sense. California, and Japan, the old eighties babies are, you know, discovered that earthquakes the shit. greater than five yeah, are more likely to occur during the new or <laughs> full moon when the sun, moon, and Earth align. Oh God! But wait a second. If this were true. It would mean that all the more reason a solar eclipse, a phenomena for which the moon and sun must be perfectly aligned, could unleash the perfect storm, mm. disrupting the Earth's surface at its weakest points. Interesting. <clears throat> and right now, while the entire North American continent is in feverish anticipation of the April 8th eclipse, a bunch of rumors have started circulating based on these evaluations, suggesting the possibility that the cosmic event could even destabilize the balance in the so-called New Madrid Fault, with mm. the consequent devastation of a territory that experienced the fury of a very violent earthquake many years ago. Wow. And wouldn't you know That's it, right, in our the backyard. earthquake in the winter mm -hmm. between 1811 and 1812 was preceded by a total solar eclipse, and also by another particular astronomical phenomenon that is also recurring. Right. Just a coincidence? Very interesting. Audio jump. Hmm. The year right. 1811 began with a spectacle that not many humans are lucky what? enough to see in their lifetime. A great comet Boy, was sighted in March of 1811. Man. Initially faint as it approached the sun, it's intensely <laughs> it's better than I increased more and more rapidly. Right, I can't so much so that some records report I can't that it had a tail paint. more than 30 degrees <laughs> long and a head larger than the disk of the sun. Its Bro, brightness reached its peak in October of 1811. I can lay down, though. It certainly yeah. became the most right, spectacular you know comet ever seen in human memory. Hey, look, look, uh, look up still videos -scientific... of the, I don't know. Videos of? Picture, videos of the eclipse going on, like, people shit. <laughs> I can't talk right. Got all this good shit. Oh, really? Good medications. Yeah. Yeah. Just what the doctor prescribed. Okay. All right. Let's see. Any of these you want to? Eclipse flight. That looks interesting. Yeah. Let's let's, let's run that. See what let's they go say fly on. with the eclipse. What's yeah. it like to experience a total uh -oh. solar eclipse from above the clouds? We join the party to find out on this flight at 39,000 feet through the path of totality. Oh, I bet Hello, you that was bad. I'm Jim Brooks from greenergrass.com. This is a flight into the total solar eclipse, and you're coming along. Here's the plan. We'll leave Austin, Texas just before 1 o'clock and fly northeast toward Indianapolis, tracking the path of totality along the way, hoping for around 10 minutes of total darkness. We've chosen this Southwest Airlines flight because they claim this is the commercial flight with the most time within the path of the total solar eclipse operating today. How in the world did we end up on this flight, Suzanne? So I saw a press release from Southwest Airlines back in October when they announced two flights that their meteorologists had determined yeah, we can for most 10 grand. in the path of totality, <laughs> which is a flight from Dallas to Pittsburgh and then this one from Austin to Indiana. I still got to so pay for your luggage. Yep. <laughs> good call. I am super excited about it. I spotted goodies over there, uh, including sun chips. You know, Delta's been getting all of the attention uh, about their eclipse flights, but these are regularly scheduled flights. So what that means is there are probably going to be people who just booked a flight from Austin to Indianapolis uh, with a surprise along the way. It's going to be a party. Mm. Definitely. <laughs> We arrived early, which gave us time to worry. 
Mm. Usually when we're filming a video, we have a pretty good idea of what to expect. But today, well, there are a lot of challenges headed our way. FAA has published a notice that there could be delays in the path of totality or reroute. So um, we don't even know about our flight path or if we might be delayed. We're flying south. You don't pay for some. You don't What the fuck, you Which means mm -mm -mm. we don't know exactly where we're going to sit. Worse yet, People just we got a pretty mind. late boarding position. Mm. So there's no guarantee of a window seat. We really have no idea if one side of the plane is better to sit on than the other. So we're just going to have to pick something and go with it. The only equipment we have to use to film is just an iPhone, so I have no idea what that's going to capture, if anything. What's I was pretty really concerned iPhone? that we wouldn't have those equipment. Oh, no, you're slut. That's but what's it looks wrong. like they're providing them, so we can stop worrying it. about that one. Headed over to the gate. It looks like the party <clears> is getting started. There are decorations and goodie bags. Local news is here, too, so this that is going to be an exciting GNX place. Haircut. No doubt about that. The one-year-old 737 MAX 8 that will take us up to Indianapolis is almost here. Should be pulling to the gate any minute now. So in my younger days, I used to think the Southwest boarding process was kind of fun. You got to like select your seatmates, so I could like pick out the cute guy I wanted to sit next to. Obviously, before I met Jeb, <laughs> but nowadays, what? a little stressful. There's a chance that we do all this work, we recorded all this stuff, and we don't make a video because we don't get a window seat. So if you're seeing this, <laughs> it's a pretty good hint that we got a window seat. But you'll know we don't know yet. Keep your fingers crossed. This looked like a pretty full flight, understandably. We tried to upgrade our boarding position, but it just wasn't possible. This is no, so no. nerve-wracking. We're so far back, I don't think there's a chance, <clears throat> but maybe we'll get a window seat. Boarding has begun. It's getting exciting. Still not sure where we're going to sit. There are a lot of people who just got on. A lot, a lot of free boards, so we'll see. Mm. But suddenly, it was our turn. You almost fell now. On the way down the jet bridge, each passenger <laughs> received this bag of treats. That's why you look back. And we made our way down the aisle, looking but hard fuck, for windows. She was filming it. As you'd expect, none were available. So we settled into seats 28D and E, a middle and aisle. And thanks to a very friendly seatmate in 28F, I was able to lean over to keep an eye out the window. Even the ground crew was getting in the mood. No, oh, wow. The bag was full of universe-themed treats. Everything from Starburst and a moon pie Ooh. to those critical mm, glasses. Moon pies. The pilots and dispatchers worked hard to make this as like special it. as it could be. Once we get airborne here, our route is going to take us right on over I like the sun pies, though. They changed the route, actually. <laughs> they had us going over towards Houston. And we changed it to go up over Dallas and Little Rock yeah. to give you the view. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Full you fired. Austin's supposed to be around 1.36 p.m. It is 1.04 Work is taking a toll on me. I already know. Let's get in the air. We're taxiing. We're taxiing fast. That's great. Let's get into the sky. Here yeah, these pilots want to get us up oh, there. Oh, shit. They're going to join the Maha Club. The path of totality. Oh, God. We heard they already asked <laughs> for a reroute to get us closer, so that's awesome. And just I mean, like it's going to be pitch black dark. Ain't like nobody going to see him go to the Southwest bathroom. Airlines, yeah, uh, that's true. Television feature, so we're able to keep track of what's going Everybody's on. Everybody's looking at the eclipse. Counter, uh, the, uh, the eclipse here on this flight. It's disappointing not to have a window, but this is still very exciting. Southwest Airlines is offering complimentary cosmic cocktails on today's solarbration flight. Mm -hmm. I ordered they a go, Red Sky, which is actually a Bloody Mary. And I had the Sun Flare, which is actually a screwdriver. Add to the party atmosphere of this flight. It looks like a dream. A palpable sense Food of excitement look ran through the like cabin. That. It was just impossible nope. to miss. Depends on what store you go we to to get your to tools. Galactic True. With the clips related you can get those little small. Unfortunately, screwdriver. right? I never for like did watches and shit. Call button Dang. quickly enough. He, he a dumbass. It is certainly getting darker mm -hmm. out there. You could tell uh, as uh, totality is getting closer. We are in the turn over Dallas as we speak, and the sun right now is mostly directly above us. Maybe off to the right just a little bit. The schedule for totality is about <clears throat> seven minutes behind us is our best guess. So uh, it's supposed to reach over Dallas a little under seven minutes from now. So it's going to catch up with us here in just about uh, six, seven minutes. And the crew are dimming the uh, lights uh, to add to the effect, but it's certainly getting darker out there. Uh, this is this is a super exciting moment. It sure is. I mean, that's what everybody has said. And nice. uh, I think we're certainly, that be we're cool, certainly feeling that same it level would. of excitement uh, here at 35,000 feet or whatever we are. Let's jump. The cabin was dark and everyone got quiet as the sun mm. slowly. I would have been in that bit of sleep. That looked comfortable. 
<laughs> the moon shadow moved at about 1,000 miles per hour, and our Good plane Lord. was flying around 600 miles per hour. That meant we were extending the amount of time we'd spent inside the shadow. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what I'd wanted to see, flying above the clouds. We could not only see the moon's shadow moving over the Earth, but also the light at the edge of the shadow. It was unlike anything I've ever seen. Now, it was nearly impossible to see the moon covering the sun from here. For that, you're much better off staying on the ground. But this light is unlike anything you could see from anywhere other than here at 39,000 feet. It's simply magical. Wow. That's super well, cool. that didn't get to see the eclipse, though. Stunningly beautiful. It's not only the <clears> most beautiful light dark, I've ever but seen, but they got to see uh, the ring from a flight. From it's the also moon. the most bizarre. That's badass. Not only knowing what it is, but the color. Of... It's hard mm -hmm. to describe. I, I don't know that the camera's really going to get it. This is really a magical experience. If you're around in 20 years, make sure you book yourself on a flight for the next solar eclipse here in the United States. Less than 10 minutes after mm. we'd entered it, the shadow passed us by. Wow. So after all my worrying if there'd be glasses or not, we ended up not really needing them. The sun was mostly directly above us, so we barely saw it. So we didn't really end up needing this, all that worrying for nothing. Did you we say paid $290 each for our tickets yep. and another $25 each for early birds. She was just excited, you know. Fairly worthless in this special mm. flight. Wow. Super excited. That's interesting. These videos are available in the description, by the way. What he said, you mm -hmm. know? Yep, video link. All right, you want to do another one or? Yeah, we'll do one more. Una mas. I just want to know what was the uh, fuss about. Because I don't think nothing ever happened. Everybody was so worried about the eclipse. But I ain't hearing nothing about anything weird happening to the earth or the people or. We might not know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see what else we've got. Um, let's see. Chasing the eclipse in NASA jets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, run that. Yeah, play that one. Nice. If you're looking to catch, catch that bitch at a Mach Six, solar eclipse, <laughs> you want to be somewhere with clear skies. For some scientists, that means heading above the clouds. During the 2024 solar eclipse, the WB-57 airplanes will be flying at an altitude of about 50,000 feet, chasing the eclipse shadow over the coast of Mexico near Mazatlan. Three science teams will be using two WB-57 jet planes to study different aspects of the eclipse. Firstly, these two teams with instruments in the nose and wings will be looking at the sun's outer atmosphere, known as the corona. Scientists often study the corona using spacecraft with coronagraphs. These are occulting disks that help block out the bright sun, but they also cover up the inner part of the corona. During a total solar eclipse, the moon perfectly blocks the sun's bright disk, I don't like corona, allowing the entire corona to appear. A total Mandela, eclipse huh? gives us the best view of the corona we can get, and it's even better when viewed from above. Holy shit. The most exciting part of using the W57 is to get over the clouds and to get to a layer of the atmosphere where it's so much less dense. This means that you can access wavelengths of light that you normally wouldn't be able to access on the ground. The team led by the University of Hawaii will measure different wavelengths of light using spectrometers and cameras. Mm -hmm. Their instruments will give insight into the corona's chemical composition and temperature. We want wow. to figure out what kind of processes are operating in the sun just above its surface. <clears> I wonder surface. why nobody been to the dark For side the of the moon. By the Southwest Research <laughs> that bitch Institute, is burnt. This will be their, their second son time made chasing that charcoal eclipse. black. So they're using an improved camera setup. In 2024, we're flying an evolution of the experiment we flew in 2017. Back then, we flew two cameras in two different wavelength ranges. For this experiment, we're flying four cameras that can measure Ooh. in seven different wavelength ranges, and that gives Sorry. us more information about the kinds of structures that we're going to see. The corona That's can cool. hold clues to what creates solar wind, the stream of charged particles coming from the sun that can cause auroras, but also potential threats to our satellites and astronauts. 
The sun can also affect technology closer to home, yep. and the eclipse allows scientists to analyze those changes. Beneath the plane, the team led by Virginia Tech will mount an instrument called an ionosonde to study how the moon's shadow will affect Earth's upper atmosphere, known as the ionosphere. This is an electrically charged region of the upper atmosphere where GPS signals and radio waves travel. So during the eclipse, when the moon casts a dark shadow on Earth, scientists will see how the lack of solar radiation changes the ionosphere. Sometimes GPS systems can be adversely impacted because of certain perturbations or uh, uh, variations in the ionosphere. Using this experiment, Nothing. we can uh, categorize <laughs> and understand how changes in solar uh, radiation can impact uh, some of this uh, technologies gonna be mean. that we rely on in our daily lives. Being in the air not only gives the teams a better vantage point, but it gives them a longer eclipse too. A longer One eclipse of the main too. Of flying the instrument Bro, on the plane I could, I could is be British, that you'll be able to track the totality over an extended interval of time. They ain't never seen a, a hood black the bridge. The jet will launch from Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. I go over like, what's up, cuz? miles per hour, allowing them to briefly chase the moon shadow as it sweeps across Mexico and Texas. This I'm, means I'm the instruments will observe the units 25% yeah, okay. longer than from the ground. Starting to go to sleep. Giving these yep. two. Yep, getting there. <clears throat> I mean, it's interesting, but I'm like, uh, what's next? All right. <clears throat> so. I wonder if at, anybody took any videos with their phones. I did. Well, I took, like, uh. I took a video. I got some pictures. pictures. Yeah. But, uh, my homeboy Parker, man, him and him, uh, his mom's in it. Well, he didn't go, which I don't see why he was off that day. Mm -hmm. But his mom's and his dad drove, drove up to Indiana or Indianapolis, wherever the fuck it was, and they went and watched it. Hmm. Cause we was online that night. <clears throat> he was like, "Dang, my parents ain't back yet." He checked where they was. They was like, "Damn, they still three hours away. They ain't fucking Kentucky." I'm like, "You dumb. I would have went." Motherfucker. Now you gotta wait twenty more motherfucking years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. You know what the uh, the uh, most searched phrase was? What after the eclipse? My eyes hurt. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'd seen that. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, it was bright. When I took my video, I had my head down. Hold my phone up. Yeah. It was a cool video. I mean, it, it didn't get fully dark here, you feel me? But mm -hmm. well, I think it's just a lot of people, they just maybe glance up at it and, uh, or, you know, take photos or videos through their phone and they think they've damaged their eyes and you know it's kind of like what do you call that uh i don't know what you call that where you're imagining that you were having an ailment and it feels real but it's not so balling bro why can't do that when we play cornhole uh, it's a different movement. This no, it's the same movement. No, this is basketball. Uh -huh, you're right, yeah. right, you're right, you're right. Now, if I was a softball player, I probably do good. You right. My auntie, <laughs> my auntie plays softball. Oh yeah. For hell alone, bro. She got hell of trophies from that shit. Like they used to go down to fucking Texas for championship games. I'm like, fuck yeah, which I was little. Damn. But yeah, she used to do her softball thing. Hmm. My whole family was all about sports, from softball to basketball cool. to football. I don't know if we got any golfers. Yeah. I doubt it. S soccer or? Mm-hmm. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Oh, wow. No soccer. <clears throat> My little brother played soccer, but that was for school. Yeah. I couldn't do it. I don't, mm -mm. I couldn't play soccer. Hmm. Put me in some shoulder pads. I got you. I'm going to murk your ass on the football field. <laughs> nice. But hell, bro, you got anything else to add to this? No, I do not. Um, uh, you know, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I was working, of course, that day of the, uh, you know, the eclipse. But, you know, I took some time, went outside, called you. And uh, I was like, yeah, man. And uh, I, I enjoyed it. It was it was wild. Just, I actually forgot about it, and then I uh, looked outside. I was like, "It looks different." Oh yeah, it's the eclipse. <laughs> so, yeah, 
Yeah, we got to step outside. We got dead as fuck. Oh, wow. So even after that, we still had an hour to do nothing. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I, 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 that was kind of cool. We got to see it. Yeah. Didn't miss it. I'll be ready for the one in 20 years, too. Hmm. If I'm still around. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Then we'll talk about it on the cast. What are we talking about? No, 20 years from now. <sighs> Imagine being on this for 20 years. Man. <laughs> Be like, no. <laughs> they were like, these motherfuckers still ain't paying y'all grip yet. <laughs> uh, now we're working on 30 years. Yeah, working on year 30. Hell no, after 20 years and we ain't rich from this shit, YouTube, y'all can just hang it up with us. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> shit, nigga got a lot of traveling and exploring to do. Can't be worried about YouTube. Mm. YouTube? Oh, yeah, nigga, when I retire, I'm getting me an RV. Really? Fuck yeah, I'm gone. Oh, wow. I mean, I'll be back, but I'll be gone for a hot minute. Well. You rolling too, ain't you? Mm-mm. Bro, you, gonna, you and your walker is going to get on that damn RV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll have to have a walker. We'll have to take one last trip now. across yeah. the country. I'll be 80. Damn. 20 years from now, you'd be 80? Mm hmm. You're only 40? Yeah. 40 plus 20 is 80. <laughs> 60, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, same thing. I, no, it's not. What? You just saved 20 years off your life. Well, you know, I'm no. already over 5,000. I mean, five. Yep. Tw- you think you're about right. Uh, I feel like I'm about 5,000. From yeah. the knee down. From the knee down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What's another 300000 Bro. Excuse me. The rest of my tack gear coming in. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I ordered a a shirt, uh, some tack gloves, uh, a, another sling for my rifle. Ooh. Uh, I got a belt harness already came in the other day. Uh, I got to I got to get a duffel bag though, cause I'm gonna put all that shit in my duffel bag mm-hmm. and store it in the van. In case shit pop off, boom, yeah. dress out. Feel me? I like being in the fire department again. Yeah. What do you expect to pop off? I don't know. You never know. Knowing yeah. the United States, I can't say the United States, man. Knowing crazy people, it ain't it ain't just the country. It's just people. Mm. Stupid people. I just don't trust them. Oh, wow. Got us new patches, too. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. I thought the other Patches. one was too big and bulky. You like these. <laughs> what What design do you have on these? I can't tell you. Oh. Mm-mm. Not on here. Oh, I got you. I got yeah. you. 10-4? Yep. I'll show them to you later, though. All right. Sounds good. Yep. Yeah, man. Well, I'm going to go home and... So you're going to cook some ribs? Get some ribs going. Ribs. Told, told Beck, I said, man, go to the store, grab a bunch of seasonings, bell peppers, onions. I said, it's going down. Because <laughs> she was like, what do you want for dinner? I said, I'm going to cook ribs. She was like, you going to cook ribs? I'm like, yep. I like my ribs. My ribs be good as fuck. Mm. Remember last year, boy? Mm-hmm. My jaw is just ready to eat. You hear it? <laughs> yep, I heard it. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Oh, man, I ain't got nothing else for yeah. y'all. But I just want to say thank you for tuning in to us once again on a beautiful weekend. Mm-hmm. Well, I be rhyming, bro. Be rhyming. Never stops. You feel me? See? <laughs> See how easy it is to freestyle? Why can't you do that shit? I'm not talented. But... <laughs> Just not. Whatever, my nigga. <clears throat> you talented. Okay. All right. You, all right. That's Cub. I'm, I'm gonna start off with him. That's Cub, the non-talented one. <laughs> Bullshit. And you know, combat, non-talented one. You no. Know. Man, we 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 love y'all. We out, man. Y'all just make sure y'all like, subscribe, share. Yep. And visit Taco Bell. <laughs> 
I don't want your money. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best place. We gotta have one episode when we ain't talking about Taco Bell. Okay, okay. just one, just one. Okay. <laughs> he said, "Yeah, fool, ain't gonna happen." <laughs> he said, "That's that's like a motherfucker going to the strip club every day. He all he gonna talk about is strip club." <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> So good. Lemonade. Bye. (laughs) Oh, shit.